Since Apple announced the first Thunderbolt 5 enabled Max last year, it hasn't taken long for peripheral makers to usher in new Thunderbolt 5 compatible devices. And of course, Sonnet is always at the forefront of such new hardware, and its Echo 13 Thunderbolt 5 SSD dock is the first Thunderbolt 5 dock with an integrated NVMe SSD. The question is, how does it perform, and better yet, should you consider it? Watch your hands-on video walkthrough for the details, and be sure to subscribe to 9to5Mac. The Echo 13 Thunderbolt 5 SSD dock features a horizontal layout and is comprised of durable black plastic. While the horizontal design takes up more desktop footprint, its flatness makes it easy to tuck away under a monitor. Living up to its branding, the unit features a total of 12 I.O. ports plus the NVMe SSD for a total of 13 different interfaces. These are available on both the front and the rear of the dock. The top of the dock features a removable black faceplate that exposes the cooling fan and NVMe SSD enclosure underneath when removed. I know some of you may be wondering if the cooling fan is audible, and the answer is, well, honestly, yes. It's not terribly loud, but you can definitely hear it if you listen closely. Here's what it sounds like without the cover. And here it is with the cover. Yeah, not all that bad. I'm super sensitive to fan noise though, so just keep that in mind. I will say that the fan and the heatsink does a great job of keeping the Echo 13 cool to the touch, especially considering that NVMe SSDs can get ridiculously hot when under load. Sonnet also includes a handy power button on the front of the device that removes power from all ports. To toggle the dock on or off, simply hold the power button for 3 seconds. Next to the power button are two status lights, link and power. The power status light denotes whether the dock is on, while the link status light indicates whether or not it's connected to a Thunderbolt host. Sonnet's Echo 13 Thunderbolt 5 SSD dock touts up to 140 watts of power delivery to compatible laptop computers. This is important because the 16-inch MacBook Pro can charge at 140 watts. When paired with Sonnet's included 240-watt capable Thunderbolt 5 cable, the dock can charge the 16-inch MacBook Pro at full 140-watt speed. While it can max out at 140 watts of power delivery, if you have additional devices connected to the dock's other charging ports, some of that wattage will be routed to those devices, which could cause the 140-watt output to throttle down. This all, of course, depends on what you have connected to the dock. Whatever the case, the power routing happens invisibly to the end user, and power delivery will automatically throttle up when it's no longer needed elsewhere. The Echo 13 features a 20 volt at 9 amp DC power input. This 180 watt power connection is what makes it possible to charge a device up to 140 watts with 40 watts of additional headroom for powering other components of the dock. The point is, users just don't have to think about this, as the dock handles all the power routing intelligently. Sonnet's Thunderbolt 5 dock also supports charging connected devices when there is no connected host to the upstream port. This is called offline charging, and all of the Echo 13's ports, with the exception of the 5 gigabits per second USB-A port, support offline charging. The Echo 13 brings Thunderbolt 5 to Sonnet's lineup for the very first time, and the dock takes full advantage. If you have a Mac with Thunderbolt 5 connectivity, such as the M4 MacBook Pro or the M4 Pro Mac Mini, then you'll be able to reap the full benefits of Thunderbolt 5. But even if you don't own the latest and greatest hardware, the dock's backwards compatibility ensures that it plays nice, albeit noticeably slower, with older Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 enabled hardware. The unit comes bundled with a Thunderbolt 5 cable capable of up to 240 watts of charging and 120 gigabits per second connectivity. When using standard Thunderbolt 5 slash USB 4 V2 accessories, the link speed will connect at 80 gigabits per second between the dock and the max Thunderbolt 5 ports. And when used with older Thunderbolt hardware, the link speed reverts to 40 gigabits per second. You can see the differences in my performance test. Next to the dock's upstream port is a 60 watt USB-C port, the first of three downstream Thunderbolt 5 ports on the dock. This is more ideal for recharging a MacBook Air or iPad Pro, devices with lower power requirements than a MacBook Pro. Four USB-A ports grace the Echo 13 as well, with the one on the front panel featuring USB 3.2 Gen 2 connectivity at 10 gigabits per second and up to 7.5 watts of power output, meaning that bus-powered SSDs should perform flawlessly when connected to this port. And two additional USB-A ports reside on the rear of the device featuring the same connectivity and charging speed. 
The front panel also includes both an SD card and micro SD memory card slot. Both of these slots feature UHS-2 SD 4.0 connectivity to help facilitate quick media transfer to your upstream connected device. The last bit of I.O. on the front of the unit is a combo jack which lets users connect a pair of headphones with a 3.5mm audio input or a headset with a built-in microphone. In the rear of the unit features the two aforementioned USB-A ports with 10 gigabits per second slash 7.5 watt power output, along with an additional USB-A port featuring USB 3.2 Gen 1 5 gigabits per second connectivity. This port, which lacks the 7.5 watt power output, is more ideal for simple devices like mice, keyboards, USB storage, etc. And next to the USB-A ports, you'll find the 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, which is obviously nice when connecting to high speed internet connections that surpass regular gigabit ethernet. I currently subscribe to two gigabit internet service, and this allows me to take full advantage of the speed while connected to the Echo 13. This 2.5 gigabit connection is also ideal for pairing with NAS boxes featuring faster ethernet connectivity options. The final two Thunderbolt ports round up the available I.O. on the Echo 13. These two ports feature 15 watt power output, which can also be handy for bus powering NVMe SSDs and for charging devices that don't require as much wattage. So what advantages does the Echo 13 bring to the table for Thunderbolt 5 enabled Mac users? For one, 80 gigabits per second of bi-directional bandwidth resulting in speeds that are twice as fast as Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. To illustrate, here is my base model M4 Mac Mini with Thunderbolt 4. When I connect a Thunderbolt 5 SSD via the Sonnet dock, you can see it connects at Thunderbolt 3 slash 4 speeds, 40 gigabits per second, thanks to backwards compatibility, and the speeds are decent. But the speed is at a whole different level when you connect to a proper Thunderbolt 5 host like the M4 Pro Mac Mini, you can see the difference there. Thus, moving files back and forth between an external SSD is much faster than before. Depending on your workflow, this could end up saving you a considerable amount of time when it's all compounded. Outside of the super fast Thunderbolt 5 connectivity, the star of the show is the built-in Kingston PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD and Thunderbolt 5 gives this SSD enough breathing room so that it's really able to flex its muscles, as you can see. Now what we're going to do is connect to my regular M4 Mac Mini with Thunderbolt 4, not Thunderbolt 5, and it illustrates the disparity between these two interfaces. You can see that the Thunderbolt 4 connection results in speeds that are still good, but are obviously a lot slower than they were with the Thunderbolt 5 connection. My review unit was a 2TB version, but Sonnet also has SKUs featuring 1TB and 4TB configs. Just note that Sonnet says that the 1TB SKU features slower write speeds of up to 4000 megabytes per second instead of 5000 megabytes per second. Needless to say, it's super handy to have storage built into the dock, which means it's one less thing you have to worry about connecting. I also like the fact that you can easily access the SSD by removing the top cover and heatsink. This means that you can upgrade the drive later on down the line if need be. Performance, of course, will depend on the type of connection that's made, but when connecting to a Thunderbolt 5 host like the M4 Pro Mac Mini, you'll reap the full rewards of the additional bandwidth. One of the main uses of docks of this type is to take advantage of one cable connectivity to all your peripherals, and that includes external displays. And although I'm currently a one display user thanks to the excellent ASUS ProArt 5K display, the Echo 13 should be able to easily handle multiple monitor setups. It can support one 4K, 5K, or 6K monitors, or three 4K monitors. Unfortunately, 8K support over Thunderbolt is not yet available for Mac OS, but if you have a Windows machine with Thunderbolt 5, it supports up to two 8K monitors as well. Display connections can be made directly to Thunderbolt or USB-C enabled displays, but can also work with DisplayPort or HDMI displays with the right USB-C to DisplayPort slash HDMI adapter or cable. I highly recommend you check out the detailed specs for all the various display configurations and asterisks because there's a lot to consider if you're a Mac user. One of the key attributes of Thunderbolt 5 is bandwidth boost technology, which will automatically route one of the two incoming bandwidth lanes to the outgoing channel, resulting in 100 20 gigabits per second bandwidth being allocated for high resolution or high refresh rate displays. And all this happens seamlessly with zero configuration needed by the end user. Unfortunately, I don't have the right monitor to test this with, but rest assured it's on the docket.
At 549, the Sonnet Echo 13 Thunderbolt 5 SSD dock is not cheap. This is a product for those that have specific needs that can benefit from the added bandwidth of Thunderbolt 5. It's also interesting if you're wishing to future-proof your setup. But when you start to take a look at the build-to-order configurations for the Mac Mini, for instance, you can see the M4 Pro Mac Mini, a 2TB SSD storage upgrade is $600. And that's just for internal storage. Whereas with the Sonnet Echo 13, you're getting the flexibility of being able to move it between devices, storage that rivals the speed of the internal SSD. And it's obviously nice to have for all the additional IO that it brings to the table. It's not the perfect dock. I mean, it's a little bit awkward that the upstream port is on the front of the device, which is great for MacBooks, but maybe not so great for desktops like the Mac mini. And there is a little bit of fan noise involved there as well. But by and large, this is a great product that adds tons of flexibility to your Mac. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. And if you like this video, be sure to check out our review of the Sonnet Mac Cuff Mini for the new Mac Mini. This lets you easily mount your Mac Mini under a desk, behind a monitor, and more.